guys, welcome to Living Waters. We are so excited to be here with you on this beautiful day in the capital city of Ottawa on Labor Day weekend. So happy Labor Day weekend, everybody. Hope you are joining us. Make sure to share this broadcast and invite friends to church today. It is going to be amazing. Pastor Sid had a powerful message. Wow, it is absolutely epic, you guys. And I'm glad you're here today at church. Uh, as we go into the new season, we're so excited. We had an amazing season with Summers at Church and uh, absolutely loved it. We're gonna continue to uh, stream for you guys. and We're, we're gonna continue to be here at LW Online uh, all season as we launch fall. And we're excited about next week. Don't miss next week as we launch fall here at LW. We're so stoked for what God is doing. And as we go into this new season, remember God says, let's be light. Let's, let's be light in this time. And I love what the word of God says because God speaks so much about being the light in the time that we're living in. And um, this whole time that we're living in, it's been really hard to actually be positive and not think of the circumstances. And as people are prepping and students are, you know, going back to school, and some of you guys are already back to school already uh, in other provinces in Canada. But uh, as our province kicks off the school year, wow. I just heard, be light, you guys. Just be light in your schools. Be light, uh, you know, wherever you go on your campuses. Be light, you know, with your friends and on your job. And I feel like this scripture is so powerful because the definition of light actually means this. It actually means something that makes vision possible. Oh my God, there's so much involved in that. And I get so stoked. Something that makes vision possible. That's what light does. It just brings everything to the surface. Light just lights everything up. And I love that because there's so much meaning behind that. And as we get into the message today, as we get into worship today, uh, which is gonna be epic and powerful, God wants to do something powerful in your life today. And I'm telling you, uh, this has been such an amazing season for us. And I am excited about what's coming, you guys. So as we get into worship today, remember this. In Matthew 5, 16, he says, Remember this, in the same way, let your light shine before others. Let your light shine before others and they will see your good works. Come on, because the light is inside of you. And so when the light's inside of you, you just like, whoa, everything else doesn't matter because we're moving ahead to show the world that there is hope and there is life and there is light. Where we 
hands Not just some distant promised land More than some awful dying dream Watch it appear just as he said When it does we'll sing Like we wish we know we should back then Peace. 
presence of God it's so powerful you guys being in the presence of God things can change I mean God can do things in seconds uh, that a therapist might take months to do and but God is so powerful you guys and if you came today uh, with burdens on your heart or you know uh, things on your heart today just give it to God I mean wow the presence of God you guys especially when we worship God his presence is with us he says we're two or more gathered God is with us and he's right here so saying that i love it and uh, going into offering today uh, so much is coming so much is coming for the fall and we will be dropping that information to you here right here so stay tuned to the broadcast every week but i love that uh, going back to school there's so much involved and and as we go into offering today um i just encourage you guys and i thank you i want to thank you for giving and thank you for giving towards our building our building plan, it is moving ahead, you guys, and you're gonna hear more as we, we get more information. 
But uh, thank you for giving because we're going to establish an incredible youth center in the city and we're excited about that. And uh, we're excited for that. So thank you for sending your tithe, you guys, and being faithful. Uh, that's awesome. And also, if you'd like to give and you haven't given before, this is absolutely a nonprofit organization. You can help us rebuild in the city, you guys. But you can give through text, you can give through the Tithely app here in the description. And we thank you guys so much for giving and believing in the vision of LW. We're excited for what God's going to do. It's not like it used to be when we were kids. The pressures, the expectations, the uncertainty. It seems like being young grows more difficult each year. And being a parent comes with an ever-increasing level of anxiety. God, as a new school year begins, we ask for your hand to rest on the shoulders of our children. May your presence be palpable, your wisdom accessible, and your glory undeniable. We pray you would guard their hearts, guide their steps, and keep them safe. As they walk the halls, may their eyes be fixed on you. When they're overwhelmed, grant them peace. And when they're uncertain, grant them understanding. Thank you for entrusting us with your creation. Now, as they go back to school, we entrust them to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. With back to school coming this week, and obviously some students back to school already, uh, I've been having some great discussions with Pastor Leanne, who is the children's pastor here at LW. She is the children's pastor of Aquaforce, and she has something uh, powerful, very powerful to bring us. Leanne, I'm just going to throw it to you right now, but uh, let us know, Leanne, uh, what you want to bring and, and let people know what's going on with our students. Thanks, Colleen. Hi, everyone. I hope you've all had a great summer. I was talking with my doctor after an appointment I had a few months ago, and knowing that I work in the school, he shared an alarming statistic with me. He mentioned to me that he and his colleagues have seen an increase in depression, anxiety, and general mental unwellness among children now as young as 7 to 12. Usually he would see it in the, in the teenage years, but now he's seeing it that young. There's an increase as well in having to prescribe kids medications, therapy, just to be able to help them get back to some semblance of who they are. That struck me. My own daughter is in that age range. She's 12. I've witnessed how hard last year was on her. What he said shocked me and shook me. But the thing is, he's right. Not only am I the children's pastor at Living Waters Christian Assembly, but I also work in the school system. Over the past two years, I've seen a lot of what he is talking about. I've seen kids that I've worked with for years, known them since kindergarten, who have become very sullen, very sad, and not themselves. Not only have I seen an increase in aggressive outbursts and bullying, and on the other side, I've also seen an increase in just apathy and a lack of joy and passion that kids would normally have. Parents, this is something so important to know. Our kids are enduring things that they've never had to deal with before, dealing with emotions they've never had to deal with before and don't know how to deal with. We need to make our home that safe space so that when they come home from that difficult day, they know that they are loved and cared for and secure. I encourage you, make sure you make a connection with your kids every day. Sometimes you may get the how you may ask the how was your day and you'll get uh, fine. Maybe rephrase it. Ask them for a highlight of their day. Ask them for a low light. Find ways to be present. Put that phone down. Get them to put the phone down. Spend those minutes. Show them you care by being present. 
Sometimes it could be that you're just sitting beside each other and that's okay. You're sharing the space and they'll talk when they need to. Let your kids know that you're there for them and you want to hear from them. Build them up, encourage them, remind them of who they are in Christ. There's one thing I've noticed with my daughter Mackenzie this past year is there starting to be people who are trying to tell her who she is and what she is and what she is to think. I was listening to an interview with Priscilla Shire and she mentioned how all through high school she had given herself a name. She wanted to be called Katie. And when she graduated, her mom sat her down and said, I better not see that graduation certificate say anything other than Priscilla because only your parents and God get to say who you are and get to name you. Make sure that you are the only one who gets to say who your child is. Tell them who they are in Christ. Remind them of who God sees them as. I do that with my kids every day. I remind them who they are. Pray for them before they go to school. Pray for them while they're at school. Pray for them throughout the day. You don't know the things that they're seeing and the pressures they're under. And we thought that we had it bad when we were kids. At least when I was a teenager, the bullying stopped when I left school. With cell phones, it now follows them everywhere they go. I wanna share with you Matthew 5, 14 to 16. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp, then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. Teach your children to be the light of Christ. My daughter Mackenzie was talking to me about how it's hard being one of the only Christians in her class. And then I thought about when we went to Bonnish Air Caves this summer as a family. Really neat place if you get a chance to go. But on the tour at the deepest part in the caves, they actually turn out all the lights. And it's a very oppressive darkness. They even had us cover our Fitbits and Apple watches so there would be no light. While she was talking, I uncovered my Fitbit a little bit so I could see some light. And it was surprising how comforting just that small amount of light is. So I told Mackenzie, even though she is only one small tiny light, that one small tiny light provides comfort in the darkness. Wisdom, if ever we needed wisdom, this hour we live in is it. With all the confusion we face, the corruption, the fear, the lack of consistent direction, and the unknowns, the world has been taken captive by an evil spirit of control and submission. Yes, the time is upon us, as spoken to us in God's Word. We are living in perilous times. But our Father, who is faithful, also tells us how to overcome this demonic attack. Scripture declares in John chapter 14, verses 13, 14, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. However, Father also tells us even more specifically in James chapter 1, verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God 
who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Wisdom is the individual request we now need to focus on. Wisdom's seven pillars, according to scripture, are fear of the Lord, instruction, knowledge, understanding, discretion, counsel, and reproof. Wisdom gives us direction on how to put into action the power of the Holy Spirit in us to overcome and not be defeated by life's circumstances. In 2005, a homeless man called Ted Rodrigue stumbled upon a briefcase filled with $20 and $50 bills totaling in today's currency over $150,000. Ted was then told by screenwriter Wayne Power, who placed the money where Rodrigue uh, could find it, that the money was his to keep and to do with as he wished, so long as he would allow a film crew to document the result. Rodrigue, of course, you know, jumped at the opportunity leading uh, to a somewhat controversial documentary called Reversal of Fortune. According to an interview with Powers, the idea of the documentary came from his time in Los Angeles where he was frequently asked for money by the homeless, prompting him to ponder, what would a homeless person do if I gave him a million dollars? Powers was curious if such a large amount of money that could really change a person's life for the better, or if it would simply make it worse. He took this idea to a filmmaker executive who took it to his board, who loved the idea, but they weren't exactly thrilled at the idea of paying out a million dollars. Eventually, talking powers down to the 150,000 mark was okay. Now all Powers needed was a homeless person to give the money to. Now according to him, he picked Ted Rodrigue after filming several conversations with him and coming to the conclusion that Ted was a man who'd been dealt a bad hand and deserved a break for once, most, mostly homeless for about two decades when filming began. The then 45-year-old Rodriguez survived by collecting cans and bottles. On an average day, he noted that he could make about 20 bucks or so, and during this, you know, enough to buy himself food, alcohol, cigarettes. On a good day, he could sometimes earn as much as $35. The filmmaker didn't interfere with Ted's life or his spending in any way, just observed and documenting his day-to-day -day life they did, however, give Ted access to a financial advisor whose advice was free for him to choose. So what was the result? Soon after finding the money, news of Ted's wealth spread throughout the homeless community who came to him asking for help, of course, uh, you know, being a generally nice guy, Ted kindly obliged, paying off many of his friends' debts and providing for them financially. Around this time, Ted also met a woman who suddenly became attracted to him the moment she found out he had acquired you know, $150,000. Wow. About a year later, Ted appeared on Oprah in an episode in an episode entitled, Are You Ready for a Windfall? And it was on this episode that Ted revealed that he'd spent or given away all of the $150,000 within six or eight months of receiving it, and that he was once again homeless. Powers concluded by saying, so to answer the question of what happens when you give more or less drug-free, reasonably psychologically sound homeless person, $150,000, pretty much exact the same thing that often happens when you suddenly give a non-homeless person a relative fortune compared to what they're used to. 
uh, like the many big ticket lotto winners, they often end up worse than or in the same state as before they got the jackpot. What's being taught here? If you're a fool with a little, you'll be an even bigger fool with much. And the lesson again that the greatest disadvantage isn't being financially poor, but being poor in wisdom. Wisdom is life's greatest treasure. In the New Living Translation of the Bible, it declares happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gets understanding, for it is better than getting silver and fine gold. She is worth more than stones of great worth, the Bible says. Nothing compares with her. Long life is in her right hand. Riches and honor are in her left hand. Her ways are pleasing, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Happy are all who hold her near. Yes, folk, wisdom's seven pillars according to Scripture are fear of the Lord, instruction, knowledge, understanding, discretion, counsel, and reproof. And having these principles solidly in place in your heart and putting them into action, you will walk boldly and free in these perilous times. No longer taking direction from what we hear from today's corrupt leaders and false news media reports, Praise God. But the question, you know, we need to ask ourselves, you know, when we ask for wisdom, which we need in this hour, will we take the steps as directed by Scripture? Or will we foolishly not put it to work and lose it and go back, you know, to the same position that we were asking for wisdom about? filled with fear and anxiety and depression, just squandering the gift of wisdom. And so Father God is saying, you know, if you're going to ask me for wisdom, I will give it to you. But you need to understand the principles of how to walk out the wisdom I give you. You need to receive counsel. If, you know, if, if <clears throat> you need to even uh, receive counsel and direction as how to work the biblical principles into your walk of wisdom, especially in this hour we live. Wow, God is so good, folks. He loves you so very much, and so do we. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. You were the word at the beginning, born with God. Now revealed in you are Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great. Love was greater. What could separate me now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. 
Praise God. You know, if you're born again and you've asked God for wisdom because you're going through situations and circumstances that you just know, know how to take a hold of, that is overcoming you rather than you becoming the overcomer, well, God declares, amen, as we just saw in Scripture, that wisdom is to instruct us in the ways of the Lord that will help us get through. So if we're dealing with fear, anxiety, depression, because of, you know, uh, the situations we're living in, then God is saying, no, look to me. That's wisdom. Look to me and let your steps be ordered by me. Fear not, for I have come to, to set you free. For who the Son sets free is free indeed. He wants you to be free. He wants you to live as an overcomer. But if you're asking for wisdom, but you're not putting it into practice with sitting down and looking at what's causing the anxiety, what's causing the fears, what's causing the depression, the Lord says, I can overcome any and all of those things if you'll just put your trust in me, if you'll say no to those things and really look to the good that's in your life, that you can rise up above the pains. You can rise above the circumstances when you trust God, you know, and look to Him and, you know, just resign yourself to Him and look at those things that are causing. You need to examine what are the things that are causing me the anxiety, the pain, the frustration, the fears in your life and say no to them. You've got to say no and trust in the Lord in all of his ways and he'll prosper you he'll walk you through it amen so right now you know if you need wisdom ask uh, god for wisdom right now and he will give it to you but then you must sit down and work it out sit down and look at what's the source of these situations and circumstances that are plaguing you causing you depression causing you anxiety causing you fear and say no to that, because you know, fear is not of the Lord. Be anxious for nothing, God says. When you look to me, you will overcome them because of the life that lives in you. You know, the fullness of the Godhead lives in you, amen? The power of the Holy Spirit lives in you and is constantly speaking you to rise up, 
to fight that good fight, to run that race, and to keep the faith. Praise God. If you're not born again and you've heard this message and you're struggling and you're filled with anxiety and you don't see any, any hope at the end of the, the tunnel or any light at the end of the road, then God is saying, now is your time. Now is your time to come to me. Now is your time to ask for forgiveness for the way you've lived and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sin by saying a prayer with Jesus. I know now I'm a sinner. I have done things that I regret. I'm now filled with fear and anxiety and I'm hearing that I've come to Father God through Jesus Christ by asking you into my life. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. I want you to be my Savior and I want you to be my Lord as well. I pray that in Jesus' name. Well, praise God if that's you. My first, you know, stay connected and get a Bible. Start reading about who you are as God declares it, not as how other people define you or how the media defines you or how its circumstances define you. And God will show you and you'll begin a journey of being able to conquer whatever it is you face. He loves you so much. And so do we. We'll see you next Sunday. We want to take this opportunity to pray for all the students and teachers, staff going back to school this week, and all of you that are already back at school in the nation of Canada, uh, especially here in our city, Ottawa, and in our province, Ontario. But again, we have Pastor Leanne from Aquaforce and Pastor Jason from Infusion uh, to pray uh, for the students and pray for the schools and pray for the staff and teachers. So I'm going to pass it to you guys. Thanks, Pastor Jason and Leanne. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this upcoming school year. Father God, we pray for the kids going into school. We pray a hedge of protection around them, Father God. We pray encouragement and strength to them. Help them, Lord God, to navigate this year. Father God, for those who work in the school system, the principals, the vice principals, the teachers, the ECEs, the EAs, the support staff, the office staff, and anyone else, the volunteers. Father God, I pray that you would encourage them, strengthen them, Give them new ideas, Lord God. Give them encouragement, physical health, Lord God. Keep them safe, Father God. Help us to be able to minister to those around us. Father God, for those of us who know you, help us to be lights in the school of you. Father God, I pray for a safe school year. I pray for a fun school year, and I pray for a great return to school. Lord, I pray for a hedge of protection around the minds of our children. I pray that uh, all of the ideas that are presented in their classrooms and in media, that you would protect them and keep them focused on you. Lord, I pray that you'd give parents wisdom to know how to guide their children through the traps and pitfalls that are set for our children. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to find good ways to bring knowledge and true wisdom from you into their lives as they go into the school this year. Help them to learn not only the basics, but Lord, how to interact with their culture and to impact it for Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow, what a powerful time to pray uh, for our students and back to school. Thanks, Pastor Jason and Leanne, you guys rock. Great having you guys on the broadcast today to pray. And wow, you guys, we are really holding up all of you in prayer. As we close out today for the Labor Day weekend, we are believing that this year is gonna be the greatest year yet. Come on, uh, God's word is powerful. So we thank you for joining us, you guys, today. What a powerful message from Pastor Sid on wisdom. Woo, that is epic. And that's gonna launch us into next Sunday. Uh, where we will be on site at a very special location in our city uh, with special guests all season long, you guys. Stay tuned to what's coming. So have a great week, everybody. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube. You can see messages there anytime you want, and they are amazing, you guys. So we want to encourage you guys. Thanks for joining us. Make sure to share this broadcast. Happy Labor Day weekend. We will see you next Sunday back here. And remember this. God works all things out for the good for those who love Him. Have a great week, everybody, and happy long weekend.